All right, so we will jump right into the next speaker. So we have Dr. Barr, so Mackenzie Barr. She is a PhD RD, an assistant professor of dietetics and human nutrition at the University of Kentucky. She currently serves as the director of the undergraduate certificate in food systems and hunger studies. Dr. Barr completed her terminal degree training at West Virginia University and has interest in the reduction of obesity and related chronic diseases at a community level. Dr. Barr's research program aims to work directly with target communities, utilizing community-based participatory research approaches to identify population need and subsequently design and implement interventions to promote healthy lifestyle behaviors. So Dr. Barr is gonna be discussing the short PIT sleep survey with us today. Hey everyone, my name is Mackenzie Barr. I am a, an assistant professor at the University of Kentucky and a member of the HCRC uh, multi-state team. So glad to be a part of the conference um, this week and I hope everyone gets a lot of good information from here. So I am going to be talking about the short Pittsburgh sleep quality index and the development that we went through to kind of make this a shortened tool and that we've used in a few studies. So an outline today, we're gonna to go over the original Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, its items and components, and then talk about the short version that we decided upon from our um, statistical analyses and what those questions end up being, as well as um, just kind of a snippet of the studies that's, that the short version has been used in since it's been developed. So the original PISQUI is a 19 item questionnaire that is going to look at usual sleep habits over the past month. And so this should give you a general picture. And so I will show on the next few slides what those questions look like. But there are seven main components of the PISQUI. And so sleep quality, latency, duration, habitual sleep efficiency, sleep disturbances, use of sleep medication, and daytime dysfunction. And so after the PISQUI is then scored, there is a range of scoring from 0 to 21 with higher scores indicating a worse sleep quality. So a global PISQUI score of greater than 5 was indicative of poor sleep quality overall. And so that would have then clinical and laboratory values that would indicate poor sleep quality and would be utilized to show um, in general clinical measures of poor sleep quality. So just going over the examples, so I put screenshots here. So the first half of the questions are on this slide and the second half of the questions will be on the next slide. And so some of the sample questions here, when do you usually go to bed? How long does it take to get to sleep? When do you get up? and how many hours of actual sleep do you get in a night? So the actual sleep is going to be a, a bit different than how long you spend in bed, right? I know that I'm a type of person that unfortunately <laughs> rolls around a lot until I can finally get comfortable and get to sleep. I have a lot going in my brain and I'll think of different things that are gonna be happening the next day or that happened today or things that will happen in the future. And so then it'll take me a little bit longer to get to sleep. Question five during the past month, how often have you had trouble sleeping because of the various measures below there? And then they're ranked on not during the past month, less than once a week, once or twice a week, or three or more times per week. So items such as waking up in the middle of the night or early in the morning, not being able to breathe comfortably, feeling too hot, feeling too cold, dreams, pain, um, snoring, getting up to use the restroom, our second half of the questions here, so starting up on the top right, during the past month, have you? Uh, how often have you taken medicine to help you sleep, prescribed or over the counter, something like melatonin, a sleep aid? During the past month, how often have you had trouble staying awake while driving, eating meals, or engaging in social activities? During the past month, how much of a problem has it been for you to keep up enthusiasm to get things done? Not a problem at all, only slight a problem, slight problem, somewhat of a problem, a very big problem. And then how would you rate, so this is a self-perception, how would you rate your overall sleep quality on number nine? Very good, fairly good, fairly bad, or very bad. 
And then these remaining questions talk a bit about if you have a partner that you sleep with or a roommate or someone that is in your sleeping environment directly with you. Do you have a bed partner or a roommate? And so depending on how then you answer this question, you would get answered. You would get um, the below 11, number 11 to pop up. So if you do have a partner or roommate um, that would be with you in a sleep environment, then asking if you are having issues sleeping because of that individual that they snore, um, if there's any twitching, jerking sleep while sleeping, disorientation, confusion, um, other restlessness while sleep, while sleep. So for our study, we utilized the original Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index in a project called Get Fruit. And so I'm sure you've probably heard that many times mentioned throughout this conference, but a USDA funded grant to look at improving healthy lifestyles, reducing unwanted weight gain in um, a college age population. And so this took place at multiple universities across the United States. And so we had eight universities participate in, four of them being intervention, four being control. And so we had um, about 1,250 undergraduate students that participated in this study. And so they filled out a pretty lengthy questionnaire at each time point. And one of the portions of that questionnaire was the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. And so from there, we did an exploratory factor analysis and not to get too much into the weeds of the statistical analyses behind this, but um, working with a statistician at our university, we um, whittled down some of these to try to figure out what components were the most important or could get rid of some items to make it a shorter survey or um, an, a questionnaire that would reduce burden on a participant, If, of course, especially if it's involved in a lengthier questionnaire. Any way that we can make that shorter for a participant is going to be beneficial and still have it be an accurate, valid questionnaire to get at sleep quality. So our original components are going to be on the left. So from the original Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, those 19 items that I just went through, there are seven original components there. And so the um, seven original components are also indicative of what's going to end up in the exploratory factor analysis and then what ends up being the PISQUI, short PISQUI components. So when we did the exploratory factor analysis, looked at the components of how this ended up being and where there were items that we could get rid of. So originally the PISQUI is 19 questions. And so what we found is that it, the questions then went into certain factors here. So you can see the triangles being where the questions fell into from a factor analysis. And so these are our new components. So these six new components are what is going to be included in the short PISQUI. So you can see that the those white blocks pretty much towards the bottom of the questions that are listed through the middle, the ones that are white boxes, those were included in the original PISQUI and those are the questions, the white ones throughout there, that didn't end up falling into a certain component in the new factor analysis. So those would be the ones that we were removing then from our new shortened version. So um, 5C being having to get up to use the restroom as one, 5J, other reasons in that you can describe of why you were having sleep disturbances. Number six, how would you rate your overall sleep quality? And number seven, how often have you taken medicine to help you sleep? And so we ended up with the factor one, sleep duration and efficiency, two of sleep latency, three sleep disturbances, four waking up in the middle of the night, five coughing and snoring, or six daytime function, dysfunction. And so our new questions are listed here. Again, similar to the last one. So as I mentioned, we got rid of a couple of the individual questions in five. So taking um, certain medication over the counter or prescribed not listed in there any longer. Number six, being able to stay awake, how much of a problem to be able to keep up enthusiasm. And so when we go through, I'm gonna go back one slide again. So we have oh, two, so we have four here and we count these all as separate, these five. So 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12 and 13 as the total. So we ended up with 13 total questions. And these are listed in a full scale in our um, published manuscript about the short Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. So you can take a look at that. And at the end of the paper, the full scale is there. So again, it's just a beneficial tool to kind of get at a valid quality instrument to assess sleep quality, but as short as we can get it to make it um, less burdensome on the participant, but also still a, a great quality um, type of instrument to really get at sleep quality. So we know that um, quality of sleep then impacts lots of things in health. So not only your ability to function during the day, but also the food choices that you make because you either feel too tired or when you feel well enough, you typically end up choosing, or when you sleep well enough, you typically end up choosing foods that are healthier as well, which is great and what we want to see. So sleep is very important for then the transpiring of other health behaviors related to it. I just wanted to show a snippet here of different studies that have cited this work of the shortened sleep quality index, Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, and what they look like. So anywhere from um, mobile health type of interventions, vocal analysis, mental health during COVID, well-being in teachers, text messaging intervention, um, lumbar spine stenosis, and sleep quality physical activity, sleep quality, and stress in teachers. Um, so lots of things, which is very interesting and very cool to see this work being out there and utilized in a, in a variety of different populations. And so lastly, I just wanted to leave you with the citation for our manuscript here that at the end of this um, article, if you scroll all the way down, you will find the, the full uh, survey at the end of there. So we hope that you are able to use this if you're interested in sleep and looking at it as a function of health and any kind of relation to other health factors. This is a great tool to use, a very um, short and sweet type of questionnaire that you can put in there um, and try to figure out sleep quality, which is really great. So um, again, check out this study. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them later. Or um, if you are interested in collaborating or um, knowing how to use this effectively. You can reach out to any of the HCRC members. We've all used this before. So um, hopefully it can benefit you in future research. Thanks for listening, you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Barr. Um, that was such an interesting presentation. We all know that sleep is super important. Um, so we do have Dr. Barr on this call today with us to answer any questions that anyone in this session has right now. So just as a reminder, if you do have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box and we'll be sure to monitor that and have your questions answered by Dr. Barr herself. Um, so I'll give you all a minute or two to kind of think and type those answers in. And in the meantime, I just have one question that I thought of. Um, so as you were doing that study um, to actually validate and shorten it, did you happen to assess any of the responses by the different universities or was it only, you know, total overall responses across all the multi-state universities? Good question. Sorry, I can't turn my oh. camera on because I get frozen, but that is a good question. We did everyone just because we needed uh, such a big sample to kind of validate those factors on there. Um, but yeah, that could be interesting. I know that I do remember when we analyzed proof data that I, one that sticks out to me was that physical activity was different across everyone. So I always thought that was interesting that like West Virginia was as equally um, physically active as Florida and it was relatively high. So that I always found that very interesting, but no, um, to your point, we didn't look at separate university, but good question. Yeah, no, it sounds, it sounds kind of interesting. Um, and yeah, I really like how you shared kind of the different applications of this, the survey since then. I think it's really cool that it could be applied to so many different settings. Um, and I think we did get one question in the chat box. So in the shortened version, is the cutoff score for poor sleep quality still five? And that's a great question. It's a great question. And I believe so. If I find out different, let me refresh my memory. But if I find out different, I'll type in a chat to you so that we can circle back. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Barr.